Hi, my name is Hamid Jamshid Rai. In this session, I'm trying to show you how to plot the variable diagrams of the frames and also the machines. Uh, at the beginning, I want to show you what is the difference between these guys and the uh, trusses. Actually, in trusses, we usually have uh, massless links between different joints. Uh, but here we have like massive and a little bit elaborated uh, joints between the uh, links between different joints. So like this one, for example, you are applying some forces or you are applying some moment in the middle of a link. Or uh, we may have some pulleys and these are, are not as simple as uh, the uh, truss ones. And trusses are usually used uh, for uh, actually compensating the load or uh, as a uh, load uh, barrier in the structures but but machines uh, are used for uh, uh, transferring the power or um, transferring the forces to uh, different parts uh, that's uh, one of the main difference between the frames and the trusses uh, when we are trying to solve the uh, problems uh, related to uh, frames uh, like the, the zero, zero force members in the uh, trusses, we have two force member in the uh, frames. Uh, the specification of such uh, links are uh, like the previous ones, but with a little bit difference. Uh, the thing here is that these these two force members, uh, uh, this one is a two force member. What is the uh, specification of this one? Why this one is not, but this one is. Uh, when you have only two connection points and you don't have any forces or moment applied in the middle. For example, here we have two connection points, but we are applying force in the middle. This is not a two force member. This one is not a two force member as well because we are applying some moment in the middle. But this one, it is a force a two force member and the thing regarding these kind of uh, members is that you can replace them with a force that was a common thing in the trusses when we had a link like this we were pretty sure that we can put a force instead of this in the, the direction of the connecting line between a and b but he, uh, but in the frames it is not possible that easy meaning that you need to satisfy these conditions having two points not applying forces or moment in the middle and these guys should be massless then we have three conditions for the two force members i would say one is two connection points only we may have more for example here we may have one two and three or more connection points two connection points and uh, no forces the second condition actually no forces or moment in the middle and also the third condition is that it should be massless or the mass should be ignorable in in such a condition you can replace this guy with a single force and that would be very helpful in solving this problem. Let's do the free body diagram of this structure, knowing that this is a two force member. Uh, if we do that, I can say I have a link over here, I have a pin or C, that would be C Y and C X. And because I know that B is a, a um, joint connected to a force member, I can put a force A B over there, which is connecting point a to point B, meaning that we know the direction of this way. The only unknown here is the magnitude of this force. Then I have one, two, three unknowns and I can solve this problem because I have three equations. That's the key part here that uh, if you don't have two force member over here, you would have two unknowns here, two unknowns here and it is impossible to solve this problem using the study equilibrium uh, equations and uh, that's the idea of two force member and how it can help us to simplify the problems 
okay the doing the free body diagram is like the previous ones meaning that wherever you have a pin you have two unknowns and uh, we are get rid of every connections and put the reactions over there and try to match the number of unknowns with the, the number of equations um, in such a problem like these ones we are facing with pulleys and that's uh, uh, maybe a new thing um, if we com compare these ones with the previous uh, videos but that's not a big deal i have some examples over here to show you what to do when you are facing with cables and pulleys the idea is this when you have a pulley or a joint this pulley can rotate if you have a cable connected to that one if you apply T1 and T2 and there is a difference between these two this is start to rotate we know we are talking about static equilibrium conditions meaning that this should be exactly this otherwise it start to rotate and this is the dynamic which is another course we are just talking about static here right and meaning that this force should be exactly this one wherever this guy go i mean the cable goes it brings the same tension otherwise it will start to move and it's not steady anymore then if i have t over here this is t these guys are t as well i have only one single t all over one single cable meaning that here i have one cable and here i have another cable i can say all over this cable the tension is the same all over this cable the tension is the same meaning that if you get rid of these ones you can put one unknown over there and the same story here if this guy is 500 this tension over here this is exactly 500 as well for doing the free body diagram we are following the same approach that we discussed before meaning that get rid of these ones whatever you get rid of you put the effect of that for example this is a cable if you get rid of that you put the tension over there this is a pin if you get rid of that you do that this part you can get rid of this part you can get rid of these are the rules that we are following we can get rid of whatever we like and do the free body diagram here we can do a free body diagram of the whole system what does it mean if we do that Meaning that it depends on our idea how to do the free body diagram, how to choose the thing which are uh, removed. For example, I am removing this this connection. Just put a T over there. I'm pretty sure all, all over this cable is T, but I consider my my free body my body is my body is this. Meaning that I consider this one, this cable, the whole cable as a part of this structure meaning that I have this permission to choose whatever I like I just get rid of this get rid of this this is a pin I'm removing that two unknowns over here and this guy is a force and let's assume that uh, it is mentioned in the question that it is a massless problem meaning that we don't have any masses for these guys this is a, a standard problem for us because I have one two three unknowns Meaning that by writing down sigma of x, sigma of y, and sigma m, we can write, we can solve this problem, right? By doing that, I would have t, a x, and a y. Somebody may ask you what is uh, other forces here, for example, here or here. You may do, or these are obvious because this is a cable all over that, this is t. But somebody may ask you what is the force on this pin or on this pin. Then this is the first step, I did my whole body diagram, whole body free body diagram, and then I can start going deeper and deeper. What does it mean? Meaning that I'm giving you a problem like this. You solve these things, you have this, you have this, you have this, and right now I'm go a little bit deeper, I disconnect this one and the other one, and try to find these forces. I know by solving the whole body diagram that these forces are known. Then I can do free body diagram on these ones. When you get rid of the pin over here, 
you need to put two forces because it's a pin and you put the reactions over there this is very very important that these two forces should be exactly the same with inverse direction the first one is arbitrary if this is um, leftward this should be rightward if if this goes upward this should be downward they are the same thing the first one is arbitrary the other one should be exactly the same with reverse direction putting these guys over here and over here for each one of these ones you can write down the free body diagrams for the pulleys writing down sigma m is not helping because we always know this is equal to this and if you take moment around the pin that would be zero the same story here meaning that sigma of x and sigma of y are the only things which are uh, helpful here actually we have used sigma m because when you are talking about uh, rotation that's sigma m we are saying that over here if you take the moment around the central pin uh, sigma m is zero and you cannot move this and this should be exactly this and that means that sigma m is already used for all of these guys meaning that you have reduced one of your unknowns you know this is not t1 and t2 it's t and t the same story over here right then sigma of x and fy is left for you and by writing down those things you can find this next then my approach here is doing the whole body diagram solving whatever you can and then go deeper and deeper and find the unknowns regarding the related to uh, the other parts okay i'm going to show you another example over here which is uh, like a excavator and it has some links over there the first thing that i want to show you is how to find the uh, two force members uh, which is a critical thing in these problems for example if you look at here in this part we have a couple of two force members. This one is a two force member. We, we just have two links and, and two connection points. And this one is another one. We have only two connection points, nothing in the middle. And let's assume that it is said that the links and the jacks uh, masses are ignorable in front of the structure of this, uh, the mass of this structure or the mass of the load over there. Okay. Uh, I would say uh, this guy is not a two force member because I have one, two, three, four connection points. And the same story here, this guy is not a two force member because we have some weights in the middle of this guy. Then uh, the first thing that we need to find here is that which one is a two force member. And why is that thing helpful? Because reduce the number of unknowns. Meaning that I'm pretty sure that this is one of them, this is one of them, this is one of them, and this is one of them. I realize that I have four uh, members, which are two force members, and for each one of them, I don't need to consider two unknowns. I have just one unknown over there. And that's a critical thing when you are going to solve such, such a problem. And then we can go ahead doing the free body diagram of a selected part of this guy for example somebody may be interested to get rid of this jack at the beginning and this pin at the beginning this is a pin we are pretty sure that it has two unknown this guy is a, a two force number this guy and you put just one force over there and you have the weight right now you can go ahead and solve this because it is a two uh, a problem a planner problem with three unknowns by solving this you can have this one and this one and this one right and you can go ahead and do other free body diagrams but be careful that your um, you need to consider that which one you're choosing at your free body as, as, as your body and then do the free body diagram for example if, if we are going to solve this one, let's assume we have solved this one and we have three unknowns as a result and I have these values, meaning that I have these values. If I ask you which one of these guys you are starting with after that, I would say this one is easier. Why is that? Because 
I am doing the same thing here. I would say this guy is a is a body, right? I have three unknowns over there, and if I solve this, I can find these ones, and then go ahead with this. If you start with this, that would be one, two, three, four unknowns. Even if you have solved this one, you cannot solve this. But when you solve this one, you can get back to this guy and find it. And then the pins. The, be careful. The pins are uh, also some parts, and you need to make sure the pin is not moving. Meaning that the steady equilibrium problem should be satisfied for each single pin, and that's a critical thing, right? Then it's very important to choose how to choose the body that you are dealing with. For example, I would say this is the first one, the best one, or this guy. And then this is the third one, and then go ahead with the pins, for example, four and five. And you need to be very skillful in doing the free body diagrams. And if you do this step correctly, the rest of that is correct easily but if you do this wrongly you definitely do the rest of that wrong and um, practicing these ones and seeing a lot of problems in this area is very critical and very essential for solving uh, the problems uh, correctly okay I want to show you another example over here this is another one uh, this one is using uh, uh, three uh, pulleys as I said, this is, uh, if you follow the cable or here, you can see this is only one cable, a single cable. It is not two, right? Meaning that if I name this guy P, this should be P as well. Otherwise, this guy start to rotate. This is P, this should be P as well. Otherwise, this cable start to move. If this is P, this guy should be P as well and this guy should be P as well meaning that all the tensions are the same and this reduced the number of unknowns that was the cable in addition to that one for each one of the pulleys you have another free body diagram so you can start from here if you are saying that okay I have 3P over here I have 600 each P would be 200 okay I have 200 for each one of these this should be 400 put it here 400 over here these are each one 200 and then I can find R right this is easy and you need to do free by the rooms for each one of them and for the cable you just follow the cable uh, line and put the same unknowns or whatever you have this is the idea behind these things and uh, another example uh, could be this one Mm, but here the story is a little bit different if you follow this one one two three four connections for this guy this is one round of cable here you have another round of cable and here you have another round of cable meaning that here I have three different tensions because I have three different pulleys and three different cables and that's very important we will solve this one as an example in the future video and um, uh, that's it for today i believe practicing free body diagrams is a critical step in solving the frames and machines correctly okay have a good one